Hi everyone, here are the growing media I have um, on hand. Here is New Zealand sphagnum moss, orchid bark, small particle size orchid bark from my local orchid nursery. We have zeolite in the form of clinoptilite. We've got hydrogen expanded clay pebbles. We've got uh, turfus MVP, which is calcine montmorillonite. We've got pumice from Oregon. We've got large particle size lava rock. We have perlite. And we don't have ceramus. I've never handled ceramus. I know that's definitely not ideal than to make a video about ceramus, but I don't know anyone with ceramus. I don't want to buy ceramus. It's expensive in Europe. It's even more expensive in the US, and then I'd be left with this expensive thing I'd never use. So here are reasons I don't think ceramics is good, and I don't want to buy ceramics. Okay, I want to dispense with some of the common, uh, commonly cited pros of ceramics. Um, first, it's that ceramics is something new. And so if it's new or it must be really good, if you do like an internet search, just type ceramis bonsai uh, forum or something like that, you'll see that ceramis has been, you know, known in the bonsai community. I found links going back to 2004, 2003, early 2000s. I'm, um, so it's not like it's some new miracle product. Um, two, um, that somehow using inorganic media you know, everything will be clean. You'll never have any type of mold or, or fungus or those types of issues. I mean, look at the ceramic pot here. Look at all of the um, organic growth. You know, maybe it's, you know, maybe this is a black mold here. Um, there's certainly, you know, green, green stuff growing on here. I mean, it is, this has been out in the elements. It, um, it gets very humid here. So there's definite, there are things growing on that, you know, it, this inorganic substance here. Um, if you think about, you know, the porcelain shower tiles in your bathroom, think about all of the gunk that grows on there. I'll link to a person who, it, you know, who was growing with uh, inorganic and they cited, uh, you know mold issues um, so you can you know it's not a cure-all it's not like you're not going to have mold issues or fungus issues um, and I think you know if you're using ceramics now that fall is coming and um, you know the weather is cooler the water is not going to evaporate as readily you're going to you might find some mold issues um, some you know too great water retention issues Okay, here's the um, third thing I want to talk about, and it is what exactly is ceramics? Um, I mean, I think even if you buy it, you don't know exactly what you're dealing with. Um, certainly the website doesn't tell you. I mean, it's, you know, why don't they tell you what it is? Um, here's what, here's my thinking on what it is. And so is it worth the money? Um, okay, we know it's a clay. So there are basically three forms of clay. I mean, clay is clay minerals, and you've got three kinds in the world. Um, there's kaolinite, uh, montmorillonite, and illite. Now you can see here the chemical formulas for each type of clay mineral and then the, the, name, uh, the common name below. And I am going to, um, you can see how Montmorillonite and Illite, you know, they're much more complex compounds. So it's hard, for, it's, it was, I'm not a chemist. It was hard for me to find um, information just on Kaolinite. So I'm just going to let these be. Um, and Kaolinite will be my substitute for what goes on when you heat clay. Um, so what these companies that are heating clay, they put it in a rotary kiln 
the kiln spins and you know there's a heat source that heats the kiln as the material inside is you know spinning with the kiln and the material inside gets hotter and hotter um, with kaolinite at 450 degrees that is an important temperature kaolinite breaks down into metacaolin um, it's also known as calcined kaolinite and water um, this was you know crystallized water it was water that was in the crystals of the clay mineral and with the heat it's able to be released and we're not adding any new subs I mean kaolinite you've got aluminum silicon oxygen those are the elements that make up this compound we are not adding any new elements or compounds so basically as it's getting heated it's just breaking down further and further there's nothing being added so here any crystallized water escapes and so you go from kaolinite at 450 degrees it starts becoming metacaolin then it's it's heated heated more and more at 925 degrees um, you get a transition substance. Um, I found different sources online, um, maybe I'll link to some below, where exactly what the transition substance is, um, it's, there's not complete agreement. You know, some say it's some type of spinel um, silicon substance, um, like a, there, there will be aluminum and oxygen and perhaps silicon, perhaps not in this transition substance. But anyway, metacaolin at 925, it starts breaking down into this transition substance and silica. Silica is, it comes in many forms. Um, it's the main constituent of sand. It is, uh, you know, one of the forms is like fused quartz. It also um, becomes glass. You, you might see like um, the silica like packets where it keeps your goods dry. So metacaolin breaks into this transition substance in silica. The increased heat is, it's still silica. I mean, it might be a different form of silica, but you still have silica. So it's getting, so we're increasing the heat from 925 to 1100 C. At 1100 Celsius, the transition substance becomes like a precursor form of molite. Uh, some people call it premolite or pseudomolite, and then you get more silica. Um, and then you keep heating and then from around 1400 degrees Celsius the pseudomolite becomes molite and more silica. Molite is a ceramic, it is a major cons um, constituent of porcelain. So I mean porcelain they don't just put clay, they don't just use kaolinite in porcelain. I mean I think you have bone ash, you have different things in porcelain but one of the major things is kaolinite and that's why at the end you get a lot of molite um, this ceramic in your porcelain dinnerware um, <clears throat> now so this is basically what's going on when you heat a clay mineral um, the first step is at a certain temperature it loses all of its crystallized um, crystalline water and for kaolinite that happens at 450 degrees now i know um the material i showed earlier turfus it is fired to 650 degrees celsius i also know that they say it it is um the clay they use is montmorillonite so it is and and they say it's calcined so it's basically um montmorillonite that has been fired to 650 degrees and just like the kaolinite lost the water the montmorillonite has lost the water and so um, turfus is calcined montmorillonite um, now what is ceramis okay of these three clay minerals here kaolinite is usually white um, illite is usually gray white uh, Montmorillonite can be a variety of colors. 
including red, pinkish. If you saw the Turfus, here is Turfus MVP, calcined Montmorillonite. It is, it is this pinkish, reddish hue. Similar to the, you know, reddishness of um, Ceramus. I think, you know, you've got these three basic clay minerals and Ceramus, I mean, if you try and look up its origin online, basically you'll only find it's fired at a sub 1000 degrees Celsius temperature. So there's not much to work with, but based on color, and firing temperature, I mean, my bet is that it is also calcined Montmorillonite. Um, if someone wants to contact Orchid Top and see if you can get to the bottom of exactly what it is, then, you know, please do so. Um, they're based in Europe and I'm based in the US. Um, but if it is calcined Montmorillonite, then they are overcharging people. What, I mean, it is crazy how much they're charging people. Let me give you um, the comparison. So this is Turfus MVP. And in the US, the main use of it is not as a growing medium. It is as a soil conditioner, as a, as a, like a field conditioner. They sprinkle this stuff on, for example, baseball fields so that um, it really absorbs water. So when the baseball players run around um, on those grass fields, they don't, you know, they're not running on mud. They're not slipping and falling because the MVP that has been sprinkled in that soil la layer is absorbing, you know, rain, um, ex absorbing excess water. But this calcine Montmorillonite here, this bag is 50 pounds. It cost me 13 US dollars to calcine Montmorillonite, okay? This calcine clay here, 50 pounds, 13 US dollars. Now, how much is Ceramis selling for, okay? And my fourth thing is, you know, I've, I'm talking about using um, Ceramis or Turfus, calcined Montmorillonite as your main, you know, either it's you're filling your entire pot with it or, you know, a majority of your pot with it. I mean, the biggest proponent for growing with calcined Montmorillonite online is, um, is a guy on a forum. He's introduced growing with Turfus to so many people, but he doesn't recommend you know, having a majority of your mix being turfus, it is just too water retentive. So if ceramis is calcined Montmorillonite, if it's um, a calcined clay and the majority of your uh, mix is ceramis, you might, you know, very well have some too much moisture problems. Okay, well, thanks for listening to my thoughts on Ceramis. Thank you.